One of the most common questions I get is, how will I know when I'm no longer a junior dev? Now that's a very fair question, but unfortunately, uh, the answer is kind of subjective. Of course, while being a junior dev is a rite of passage to some degree, you don't wanna be there any longer than you have to be. So today I wanna give you three keys to help you know if you're at or close to being able to get rid of that junior dev title, or if you still have some work to do. So let's dive in. Hey, Junior Devs, Dev Mentor Dave here, helping you bridge the gap from learning to code to launching a successful career. And part of launching that successful career is knowing when you've moved beyond the junior dev stage. Now you can ask a lot of different people what their opinions are. And again, this is just my opinion and hopefully some general ideas to help you understand where you are in that journey. But you're gonna get a lot of different answers, especially from employers. A lot of people think of junior devs as somebody who only has a certain number of years of experience or who has only learned a certain language or tool set or something like that. But the reality is advancing from junior dev to mid-level dev really has nothing to do with how many years you've been writing code. It has nothing to do with how many projects you've built or how many languages you've learned. It doesn't have anything to do with whether you can write perfect code because as you've probably seen me on the live streams, uh, I don't write perfect code. It really is subjective, but what you're looking for is advancement in three kind of core areas. That's knowledge, experience, and confidence. Today, I wanna to give you three key indicators, one in each of those different areas that will help you kind of understand if you are still a junior dev and still have things to work on, or if maybe you've moved on from junior dev and you should get rid of the title. Okay, step number one is do you understand the problems in your code? This is a key indicator for somebody who's just learning to code and somebody who's been writing code long enough to call themselves a mid-level or a senior level developer. First of all, do you understand the error messages that are popping up on your screen? When you have a bug, when you have errors that are showing, whether it's in your IDE or in your console or wherever it is, do you understand what those error messages are saying? Can you read them? Can you make sense of what they're telling you to look for? Can you read through an error stack and understand what's actually happening there? Do you understand the basic HTTP codes such as 401, 403, 500? Do you understand what those are used for so it helps you more quickly diagnose the issue? Can you backtrace through the code base to find the real problem in case the error message that you have is pointing you to something further down the line? And do you recognize previous bugs that you've run into before? This is a big one, especially for senior level devs. One of the reasons why they're senior level devs is they've seen a lot of bugs and probably created a lot of bugs. And so they recognize some similar bugs, some similar patterns and issues that they've run into before. So they're able to find them and fix them quickly. So test number one is, do you understand the problems in your code? Test number two is, do you know how to find the solution? And this is not just asking a senior dev, we're talking about you on your own finding the solution to your problem. Now let's be honest, even senior devs have to ask for help from other people once in a while. So I'm not saying that if you ever ask for help, you're not a senior dev or you're not a mid-level dev, you're just stuck at junior level. No, everybody asks for help at one point or another. I'm also not saying that you have to know what the solution is right away. If you knew what the solution was, you probably wouldn't have caused the bug in the first place. As a junior developer, what you need to grow in is learning how to find the solution, knowing where to go to find the solution. Now, a big part of that is documentation, learning documentation, learning how to read documentation, how to search documentation, how to understand the organization of documentation, even though they're kind of all over the place at times, but get used to reading documentation. A good mid and senior level developer knows where to find the answers in the documentation and they can sift through it quickly to find the information that they need for their specific problem. Yes, that does include Google search and maybe even chat GPT or something like that. But part of the issue there is understanding what should you search for? What 
prompts should you be giving that chat GPT query? So not only do you know where to find the solution, but do you know how to search for it? Do you know what piece of the error message you need to find the information in Google or Stack Overflow or ChatGPT or something like that? And honestly, this really just comes from a lot of experience. The more bugs you interact with, the more you're going to learn and the more you're going to figure out how to use the tools at your disposal. So do you understand the problem with your code? Do you know how to find the solution? And number three, and really I think the most important one, is do you understand the solution to your problem? See, when I say you need to be able to find the solution, I'm not meaning that you just find something on a website that you copy paste into your code. We've been doing that for years with Stack Overflow. That doesn't mean we're good developers. I'm not talking about putting a question into ChatGPT and asking for it to give me the code back to put it into my code base. That doesn't tell me that I've actually grown in any way. So the question is, even if you do find code that you copy paste from someplace else and manipulate it a little bit, do you understand what that code is actually doing? Do you understand the problem well enough to understand why this solution actually fixes that problem? And probably most importantly, can you explain that solution to somebody else? Because that might come up in a code review. It might come up when somebody else is interacting with that code in the future. It might come up when you're act interacting with that code in the future. So you wanna be able to understand what that code is doing so that you can explain it to somebody else so that you can know this is the right solution. So if you wanna know if you're still stuck as a junior developer or maybe you've moved on to a mid-level developer, these three key questions will really help you answer that for yourself regardless of what other people say. Hey, I hope this has been helpful on your development journey. And if it has, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button. And uh, if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified the next time I upload a video or the next time I go live, which is typically every Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon Central United States time. Thanks for spending time with me today, and I'll see you on the next one.